At Waste Industries, we pride ourselves on providing a level of service that is unmatched by any of our competition. This promise to provide superior service extends into every aspect of our business, including educating our customers on how we handle their waste each and every day. One of the main concerns we have noticed over the years comes down to landfill operations. Waste Industries goes above and beyond when it comes to managing a landfill. So, it is with great pleasure that we can offer this video that answers the common question of how exactly a landfill under Waste Industries management works. So let's start at the beginning with the common misconceptions of a landfill. And from there, we'll show you how we at Waste Industries do business to better serve your community. Some of the common misconceptions of uh, the landfill industry as a whole is, you know, open dump, lots and lots of acres of waste exposed, vector, stray animals, insects, um, odor issues, not enough regulation, and that couldn't be any further from the truth. Um, that's uh, pretty evident uh, when we give tours uh, and people come out to the site. Um, you know, we've done it from seven-year-olds to, you know, Lions Clubs and Rotary Club, and, and when people come out, uh, to see, you know, landscaping and there's not litter all over the place and, and the grass is, you know, manicured, uh, the road is paved and there's not dust. Uh, it, it really starts to, to, to change people's perceptions. The modern landfill is uh, substantially different from what, what they did back uh, in the 70s and 80s, uh, and really even in the early 90s. Now everything is, is clay lined. Uh, with a synthetic. Everything's built to collect the wastewater off the bottom of the landfill. We've got to minimize the impact on the groundwater, covered daily, and closed essentially with the synthetic as well. And all these things uh, just add into minimizing uh, the impact that we have, not just on our property, but surrounding properties. We've got multiple permits from multiple agencies that all stipulate exactly how we're able to operate. And frankly, if you follow the rules and guidelines that are, that are prescribed uh, for a subtitle D landfill, uh, you won't have the issues of, of vector and litter and odor. Um, really, all you gotta do is what you're supposed to do. So a, a truck comes in, comes onto the scales. That, it starts there um, because you're waste screening, making sure that everything you're taking is acceptable um, based on what your permitted limits are. And again, that's just to minimize impact, to make sure that the wastewater we produce is not overly contaminated. Uh, a good example of that would be radioactive. Uh, we have uh, uh, Geiger counters mounted on our scales that sends the trucks as they drive through, just to ensure that we're not taking, um, you know, everybody thinks green glowing goo is going into the landfill. And, and we laugh about these things, but uh, these are the types of things that people's imagination leads them to. And, and, and those are the types of those are the types of misconceptions that we need to debunk. Once the truck hits the scale, it's weighed, it's categorized, filed, documented historically. We can pull up any truck from any location in our scale system back to uh, as far as we've been managing the facility. And once it passes all of the prerequisites for disposal, um, the truck is released to go up to the working face. So once a truck's released um, to, to the working face or the tipping face, um, it, it travels up. All other roads um, goes up there. Uh, we maintain a spotter uh, at our facilities. He's essentially the safety cop. He's up there to make sure the trucks aren't banging together. One guy's not moving when another guy's moving. Keeping spacing, making sure people are wearing their their hard hats, their safety vests, because th that's that's another piece of the puzzle is is making sure that not only do they come in with acceptable waste, they go home with all the same body parts they came in with. Once the waste is unloaded. Uh, the, the bulldozers come up, they push the waste, uh, they spread it out, the compactor packs it in, uh, in, in layers, and uh, we, we cover that waste at the end of the day. Uh, the waste gets covered, and essentially it's waste on top of waste. We're going to minimize the amount of soil that we put into the facility. Again, that's, that's to extend the useful life of the facility. Once we reach final grade, uh, we're going to put liner on top of the landfill a vegetative layer. We're going to grow grass. It's going to really look like any other grassy knoll that you would see anywhere else. And really the site becomes dormant at that point. Very self-contained, quiet. The top liner is, is welded to the bottom liner, so there's there's no opportunity for seepage or leakage. The wastewater is pulled out from the bottom of the site uh, and managed appropriately. The landfill gas is collected uh, from the top of the landfill where it's collected and utilized which is, is, really, uh, is really the end goal. Ultimately, 
uh, there is no open exposed waste at the end of the day and that's 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 very important that that people understand that because you know it's it's easy to see these pictures of, of old sites and think that that's still what's going on now the, the days of finding a wetland and filling it in with garbage have, have long passed